Hey Gateway Church. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Sam and myself and my wife Hannah and our little daughter Livy have been coming to Gateway since about October, November time. And we've, we've also got a little boy um, who's due any day now um, on the way as well. And we have been felt really loved and really privileged to be a part of Gateway in the community here. We have loved getting involved in as much as we can. I've been getting a little bit involved in the youth work and, and the youth team and, and things like that. And we've just loved kind of getting to know those of you who we have got to know and are just so looking forward to getting to know everyone else in this lovely church community. We, myself and my family, we wish you well and we hope that you're doing OK um, in this lockdown and things like that as well. And it is my privilege today to kind of just dive into the Psalms again together as part of our devotion series. And the Psalm that we're going to be looking at today is Psalm 27. And the, the verse that we're going to be kind of majoring on over this time is in verse four of Psalm 27. I just encourage you to, to get a Bible and be going along with me. We're going to be unpacking some things in this Psalm today. And I'd love for you to see that what I'm saying is coming out of the word of God and not kind of my thoughts and, and, and kind of feelings and things like that but it's something that God is is impressing upon us and and is leading us in in this time and in this season of our lives so Psalm 27 and verse 4 reads like this one thing I have asked of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple now, I first read this psalm years and years ago now, but ever since I read this psalm, this psalm has captured my imagination. This verse has captured my imagination of, of what does it look like to be a one thing person? Because this rings true. It seems so much to me that, that this this idea, this ideal of being a one thing person, being after one thing and that one thing being as we've just read the presence of God to gaze upon his beauty, to be around his presence is it seems to be what is the heart of a lot of what Jesus said. You know, this almost feeds into or sums up as well the greatest commandment to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength and to love our neighbours as ourselves. It's, it's about being a one thing people. Jesus was a one thing man. He was after the presence and the glory of God. He just longed to be around God and to, to lead people to the knowledge of that God, of the, of the one thing that he sought after more than anything else. And actually, for us as a people, the question really is, is how do I become a one thing person? And the psalm is really good at answering that question, because in verse one of Psalm 27, we read, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, the way you become a one thing person is by meeting Jesus. By having an experience and encounter where the Holy Spirit stirs faith in your heart and you behold the beauty of God. You see Jesus in, in dying for your sin, in paying the penalty for your sin, in bearing the wrath of God on your behalf, in who he is and what he's done. And the life that he leads you to in God, in knowing God and being adopted, becoming a child of God and being known and accepted. And for all our sins being forgiven, to not be afraid of punishment, to not feeling like we need to hide anymore, but being able to be open and free because of the work of Jesus. That the Lord is our light and our salvation. By the very definition of what it means to be a Christian, it means giving up all that stuff that we once potentially held dear, the, the things of this world and, and clinging on to Jesus and saying, God, I'll give it all up. In Paul, in, in Philippians chapter three, verse eight, says that he can counts all things as loss compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus. And actually, that's what, again, what it looks like to be a one thing people. This idea of, of everything, all that we are being sold out oh, seems to be the theme that runs through scripture. That if you're going to see God and behold God and know God, you're going to follow him with all that you've got. And actually, the starting place of how we become a one thing people really is just we just get saved. I don't think there's any more complicated journey than that. 
Maybe it's as well as being filled with the spirit and partnering with God in that and the Holy Spirit coming and dwelling with us when we become Christians and enabling us to live lives for him, to experience him and encounter him and to build upon that, that experience of salvation. But how we get there is very simple. The Lord becomes our light and he becomes our salvation. And the question then is, and this is, I think, is the key one. This is the one that I focused on, the one that I've struggled with and wrestled with. And I'm still wrestling with, if I'm perfectly honest, is this notion of how do I stay a one thing person? How do we as the church, how do we as Gateway Church stay a one thing people pursuing the presence of God as his people? And again, the psalm is really good at helping us out with this because it says in verse eight, it says, you're You have said, seek my face. And my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. And that's it. I really think that's it. I really think that's the key of what it means to be a one thing people. God has said, seek my face. Love me with all that you've got, your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Seek my face. And it says, my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. It's about our hearts, the affections of our hearts being about seeing God's face. Now, seeing God's face, just it looks like seeing his presence. It looks like pursuing him. It looks like desiring to meet with him. And that's, that's, the, that's a motivating factor in our lives. It should be the motivating factor in our lives. That we have met with God and we're saying, as the psalmist says in chapter four, God, I just want to be around your presence. I just want to behold your beauty, behold your glory, to know you more, to love you more, to encounter more of your love, to let that overflow from me into the lives of those around me. Now, what that looks like practically is going to look different for everybody. And the reason for that is that God created us all differently. And I find it really helpful the way that Matt Chandler from the Village Church in Texas describes this. And he just basically says, just find out whatever it is that stirs your affection for Jesus and do that thing. So do that thing that stirs your affection for Jesus. So for him, it's getting up at five in the morning and getting into the Bible and just being in the presence of God. For other people, it's going to look different. For other people, it's going to look like for going going on a walk with God through nature or just sitting quietly and, and allowing him to speak to you by his spirit. It might look like actually just getting with a friend once a week and just pursuing God in prayer. It might look like worshipping and going after the presence of God that way. It doesn't matter what it is. What is it? That's my question. What is it? What stirs your affection for Jesus? And if you don't know yet, then try whatever you can until you find out what it is and do that thing. Stir up your affection for Jesus. In Romans chapter 12, in the part that talks about what the marks of a true Christian are, it says that that one of the marks of a true Christian is, is keeping up our spiritual zeal, our spiritual further. It's about not getting apathetic and, and lazy in our walk, but pursuing God with all we've got. It's about being a one thing people. So what is it that stirs your affection for Jesus and how can you do that in lockdown? How can you do that? How can you prioritise that in lockdown? Actually, for many of us, we've got more time. I know not all of us do, but for many of us, we've got more time than we would normally have now. What rhythms can we put in place that stir our affection for Jesus so that when we get out of lockdown, we can keep those rhythms up? And this being a one thing, people, it has an impact. There's a result to it. And that result is is in verse 13, where it says this. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, being a one thing people has an impact on the land around us. Knowing the presence of God and pursuing him above all things says, no, I believe that I believe that God is going to make a move. That God is going to break in, that God is going to move in such a way that people's lives are transformed. And when we're a one thing people, we we partner with him in seeing his kingdom established. When we're full of his spirit from pursuing his presence, we're, we're praying for people to be healed and restored. We're praying that God would break through in the darkness of our town, in, in, in domestically violent relationships, in, in drug addiction and alcoholism, in people with no hope, those who are lost in debt. As we, as we pursue God and are a one thing people, we're like, no, I believe the goodness of the Lord is going to be in the land of the living, in this land, in 
our town in Ashford and we pursue it. But we only pursue it in as much as we're pursuing him. As a one thing in our heart that we're going after above all else. Just want to close as we're in this season with the, the words of verse 14. And the words of verse 14 says this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Let's be a one thing people this week and every week. Pursuing the presence of God and showing him to others. God bless you all. We're praying for you all. We hope to see you soon.